Thank you for joining me once again on the Sutherland Report. I'm delighted to be here. I am delighted and privileged to have your company. So thank you. I'm continuing more interviews in my series with parliamentary reform candidates for parliamentary candidates for Reform UK. It becomes a mouthful sometimes but I am aiming to get this right. And now I am going to bring on their prospective parliamentary candidate, Reform UK for Hastings and Rye, and bring on dear Lucien Fernando. We will go through our usual geography lesson and then we will find out everything that Lucien is up to. Lucien, thank you very much indeed. As you know, with all the broadcasts that you are doing, sometimes certain things become a mouthful but we get there in the end. So thank you uh, for joining me. It's a delight to meet you via the digital medium, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you for inviting me and giving me an opportunity and giving me a stage. Thank you. It's Thank you. Much appreciated. Not at all. So let's start off with our usual geography lesson. We've put up the wonderful map of the wonderful country called the UK. And uh, let's do that. And then you can just tell us where your constituency is and where and then we're punching and show you that oh i love the geography <laughs> it's straight down it's a 59 miles from croydon so croydon is in london so if you take um uh, in your map uh, the red dot is london so if you come down straight down um through the a21 it's there the bottom it will be the hastings which is connected with rye as well right. yes that's so it here it's, it is uh, yeah, it is. That's the red one, red mark, 1066, which have a very rich in the history um, regarding 1066 battle and everything. Brilliant. So, Lucien, there you are, the prospective parliamentary candidate for Reform UK, Hastings and Rye. Yes. You have been wonderfully, you've been, uh, you did, uh, been doing some TV. There are uh, press coverage, et cetera, et cetera, of your candidacy. As you are going about in Hastings and Rye, which is an area I know very well, um, what, it, what discussions are you having with, with constituents? What are their concerns? What are they bringing to you, sir? At the moment, this election going to be a very, very interesting um mark because um there are so many so many problems going on the local issues that are there that's one side and the national issues are there one side so it is it is very very um interesting election and it is going to be a lots of lots of protesting vote going to be happening uh one thing they are fed up with conservative another thing they are fed up with labor um and the other parties as well and the reason for it, the Conservative and Labour are same circus, different clowns. I can openly admit that one. Um, only the Reform UK at the moment have are looking forward for a, a new change, new direction. Because at the start, it's, peop it's people used to think right-wing politics and a left-wing politics. It's not right-wing or left-wing. I would say it's a right or wrong basically, because the direction is going forward. It is a very dangerous situation and the Conservative government not doing anything, even the Conservative local MP not doing anything. She go with the party flow in the Conservative and she's party whipped as well. So if it is anything happening to the constituency, Hastings and Rye, she will not speak against the party. So she's going to support the party rather than the people who are elected her. The current situation in here, we have a cost of living crisis. And even though conservatives say, oh, we we have the after inflation. And even this morning, there was a 2% decrease in inflation. But the thing is, my question is, even though the inflation fell down they, they, as per their record, um, but the food prices didn't go down. Still, people are depending on the food bank. People are very struggling to live with one job. And people, youngsters are really, really struggling to get onto the mortgage ladder, property ladder. And um, people are very struggling for paying the energy bill. 
and the pensioners are really really struggling to live with their pension money which they worked hard hard working all their life by when they are living like a last 20 years or 30 years or 10 years god knows we we don't know what's their life spanner even i don't know what's my life spanner it's only the god knows so I, I, when they are worked all their life and in the last time they in the last days they can't live with their pension money they are struggling so they have to find another job while they're getting the pension money and it, it, it can go on and on and on and on on and people are in locally we have a problem with fisheries fishing have a problem with because the eu we have a brexit which is a brilliant thing which has happened in my view uh, Brexit is another chapter. If I start to talk about it, it's going to take ages. So I will, I, I'll stop there. Um, so we have a problem with the EU, which is that we, we, we started with it and it's never completed or never accomplished at 100 percent. And people are, are the, the fisher, fishermen are struggling on that one. And the farming is struggling, which is the rye. Forget about the Hastings. The surrounding one to the rye, it's more people are farmers, depending on the rural community. And they're struggling as well with the cost of living and the supplier demands and those kind of things. Because we're getting uh, farm pro pro products from the abroad for cheaper than the farmers producing in here. So they are struggling. And another one are the p private companies, uh, which is the Southern Water. Uh, we have sewage dumping and southern water dumping on the sea. Um, and the government is looking at it. Oh, we're going to do this one and that one, ifs and buts, and nothing happening. And this private company are making millions and millions of pounds. And uh, the conservative current government, nothing is doing at the moment. And even Labour comes on, they're also not going to do anything. I've heard the one about the sewage because uh, Ian uh, Gribben in, in Bex Hill, candidate mm. there, is, is facing some some of the same uh, the same issues. Are um, in one sense ticking a number of things off. But in my conversations with candidates up and down the country, with what you've said, the, there's a familiar discussion. So continu continuing the familiarity in that sense, are people struggling to find to get appointments to see a, a general practitioner, their doctor? What about health services in general? Is there a strain when, the, you know, hospitals, etc, cetera, etc? Cetera? What are your, what are you finding on the ground there? Exactly, Mark. That means I would say NHS need urgent reform. That's why reform very, very clear about it in our contract. Oh, by the way, we do contract with voters. We don't do manifesto like other party does it. The contract means how we, we are respecting the voters like uh, we can't breach the contract because it's a promise. The manifesto, you can switch around like a Labour or Conservative or other parties like Lib Dems or anything. But the contract is so important for us. So that's why we named as a contract. So it's a kind of uh, we making a deal with uh, uh, the voters who are putting a trust on us. So in, in, in NHS, the health, National Health Service, we need an urgent reform. So we are clear about it. Uh, in doctors and nurses shortage, uh, which is uh, these these first, if we get elected within a hundred days, we will be reforming it. So end of uh, end for doctors and nurses shortage, and use the independent healthcare capacity. So uh, we we will be giving a tax relief of twenty percent for private healthcare insurance, and A and E will be reformed. Uh, how we can uh, cut 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 shortage of it because most of the people because of they can't take a, they they couldn't get an appointment from gp they 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 coming to a mentality oh let's go to the a and e and sit down even at four or five hours later we can sort out the problem because people are desperate let's say if i if a person getting a like a arm pain or something or or leg pain or something so to find out whether he have a problem he had to wait for GP appointment, and the GP appointment, it's not going to be a quick. So after waiting that one, you have to go to GP. Then after doctor doctor cons consulting the doctor, then the doctor will say, okay, we're going to refer you to the um, extra department. So he, have to, he or she have to wait for another long time to get an extra department. 
then they want the x-ray done so they have to wait until the gp contact them so it's a such a long process so rather than they they prefer to go to straight away to hey and e and wait for a uh, six or seven hours god knows how long it is uh, then they take the x-ray and done and dust on that day so these all are need to be reformed and and public inquiry needed for excess death and vaccination harms because some of the vaccination they're doing it, uh, it it's needed a inquiry for it to investigate those kind of things we we will be reforming it and we, reform will be looking at it but we have a long time long time program such as we gonna um, a, a scrap if a person want to study so we will be giving a, con a studying a doctor or nurses we will be giving a kind of a contract for a student that means if you are giving that's fine you can study educated in here if you're gonna willing to give a 10 years service to our country our community then we will scrap off your student loan so they they don't have to bear with the student loan burden because at the moment even if uh, someone want to study for doctor or nurse they have to borrow the money and that once they qualified it they they're looking for another job to pay off that bill because the and it just doesn't pay enough for them i hear you very loudly so there's infrastructure issues what about um public transport are people i know i know where you are on the south and particularly when the constituency may spread out and i do want to come to farming but are people noticing that uh, public transport or bus services etc private bus services has that has that changed has that changed is that is are they, are they being retracted because fuel prices of course have gone up and within your constituency people have got to get around what is there any comments on that yeah the public transport it's uh we 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 are looking for a, another kind of reform for it because these privatization should be renationalized because public uh transport in my opinion i would say it should be run by a public rather than we are rather than this private company making a profit it should be if we make a profit we should be reinvesting on it and um it's uh, those kind of things and uh, we will be accelerating the transport infrastructure such as focusing on our coastal region wales the north and the midlands in improving existing rail and the road links integrated services very critical these are so we will be looking uh, we will be looking at that one to uh, improve it and uh, there is another thing we will be scrapping hs2 to save the 25 billion uh to 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 uh vanity of this project and we will be investing that money to a, 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 a in a different way and a tighter regulation for a new ownership um model for critical national infrastructures and those kind of things, like a, a british taxpayer uh, need to be controlled in uh, uh, britain's utilities and um, such as uh, that the electric vehicle because people are now the current situation they think oh if we uh, buy an electric car uh, we gonna we gonna improve the environment and those kind of things but to buy an electric car it's quite costly and people are struggling to live so the public transportation should be reliable and cost effective you can't tell to a people to uh, it's for example if you are traveling to scotland you're gonna pay more than traveling to a poland and <laughs> poland with the return ticket sometimes it's a ryan yeah do a very very cheap prices you can get to poland and come back within a 35 pound but to get to Glasgow or Edinburgh, you have to pay £150 on a train. And the, these are quite um, uh, nonsense in Delhi. So I think we need to reform and these these should be renationalized re and should be a public ownership. We should take it back. I hear you. You talked about farmers earlier and they are a very, very important part of our society and in fact in many ways we may argue that we do not venerate them enough so are you are they concerned about food security what about 
the challenges that they are facing? Are they also being challenged to turn their fields into double glazing, as I'll call it, solar panels and all this kind of thing? What are, what are their concerns, Lucian? Um, the farming and, uh, I, in fact, I would say farming and uh, fr British uh, British fisheries together, because um, some the farming going through of uh, farming farmers are going through a very difficult uh, situation because, uh, as I, I as I uh, some people sometime I I told to some people that mean if you are buying a local product, it's expensive but if you are buying an imported product uh it's quite cheaper why what's the reason because we have a certain regulation farmers have to go through so such as those things we need to reform it like uh, increase the farming budget to three billion pounds and scrap the climate related farming subsidize um those kind of things like protecting the country uh, uh, country farming things and farming like a Brit buy British buy a quality and stop the supermarket price fixing those kind of things sometimes the supermarket fix the price so the farmers cannot because the farmers the product is uh, it, it only a certain time period it's validity otherwise it's go rotten or something it, it, it will be it cannot be consumed so supermarket tend to do fixing the price so we need to stop that one farmers need to make a profit because they are the hard workers and especially especially around hastings and rye area there are lots of farmers such as apple farming vineyards and those kind of farming lots of farmers are there corn so the agriculture british agriculture is so important and it's because in my constituency fishing and farming together i will see it because fishing or fishermen also going through so many problems with the EU because of the Brexit. But Brexit is a brilliant thing. But the Brexit project is not completed properly because such as the foreign tro super trawlers are coming and fishing in the UK waters. So we need to ban them and stop the EU fisher, fishers, uh, fishermen taking UK quotas. Um, those kind of things, uh, expand the Royal Navy overseas petrol squadron. So if the Royal Navy protecting our, our seas, that means we can stop this EU flagship entering our waters and fishing in our, our, our waters because our sh fishermen are deserved to fishing on our space, not the other country trawlers should be um, uh, should be uh, fishing in our, our, our area, our waters. And guaranteed sustain, sustainable stock so revitalizing re the uk's fishing fleet rebuilding the uk fish processing center so these kind of stuff, things uh, we need to look at it to help the farming plus the fishing uh, fishing industries excellent excellently put but is there is there a, are farmers being offered subsidies in your areas to solar panel the whole the whole green green agenda are they yes, being pressurized but, along I, those lines yeah i think uh, that, that's why i uh, i uh, i started saying that mean that scrap the climate related farming mm. subsidies like a, a productive land should be used for farming rather than they are planting this solar power or the windmill they, they're preventing the farmers to uh, 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 to do the farming properly because of that, because the farmers be struggling to uh, make money on the products, uh, they, they, they are forcefully pushed to situation sometimes, oh, rather than I'm doing a farming, I can do a, 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 this solar planner, solar power, climate exchange, these kind of things. Uh, it, it is nonsense uh, in my belief because uh, because it's a climate climate thing. It's quite expensive. And for, in my opinion, the farmers and the farming, British farming should be protected and they should be, they should be motivated to their business and protect to their business. What about um, schools provision? Are people finding it difficult that the 
you know, if there aren't enough places for uh, their children to get to the particular schools that they want um, them to go to. And also, also, are there apprenticeships being offered in, in your area? This whole thing of employment for the young people and to get, get back into, say, apprenticeships and working along, along those lines instead of as if the assumption that everyone's going to go to universities from 1997. What are your thoughts, Lucian? Yeah, that means the, the children, the too many children and the young people are being badly let down because um, we, we need to increase, the, we need to reform the educational system, such as like a patriotic curriculum in the primary and secondary school, um, cut funding to the university that undermine the free speech, scrap interest on student loans and sometime the uh, uh, the uh, uh, some sometime the tax relief of 20 percent of all <clears throat> all in uh, independent education um university must provide two years uh, undergraduate courses those kind of things will be offered but to be honest um in my opinion there are uh, apprenticeships are very low because in the hastings and rye area it's a quite small town and we are rural so if it is anything if a young person or young people wants to look for opportunity they have to move to london uh, that's how the society uh, that's how the town is made but i think because of they are going to a different place we are <coughs> exporting our talented individual to the different towns and cities i think they should be <coughs> we should offer them a, quite a, a improvement and a job opportunities uh, such as um, kind of a, like you say the apprenticeships or if they want to work in a railway they would there should be an apprenticeship in network rail um, those kind of opportunities they should be offered or if they want to work in the hospitals we have a nice hospital conquest hospital in uh, Hastings they should be offered as an apprenticeship over there so after the apprenticeship they should be guaranteed with the job rather than they just <clears throat> uh, worked for uh, six or seven months then later employer turning around and say okay we don't want you you can move somewhere um this is shouldn't be happening so because the hard work they put it in the apprenticeship they should be guaranteed with the work over there so those kind of th things are should be encouraged and motivated for my belief i don't think that's happening um right. in educational system I think we need to reform it. There are plenty of plenty young people are looking for a new opportunity in this area. We have a East Sussex uh, College, which is um, amalgamated with the Brighton University. Uh, we have a Brighton University branch in Hastings as well. So, but after qualifying it, as I said earlier, they will be moving different places or different country. I know a guy, uh, he was brought up in Staple Cross for his education. He moved to, he studied in Brighton. Now he's been offered with a nice package. He's moving to China in a month later. So those kind of things, we are exporting our talented individual and young people. So this shouldn't be happen. And we need to uh, motivate them and we need to create an opportunity for them. Lucien, at this point, it'd be really great to uh, say how people can get hold of you. And especially if they want to be able to help you. And I want to move into talking about your campaign and finding out about hustings etc so how can people reach out to you sir <laughs> I, I i i can easily say that one because i am a very friendly and open-minded person you can easily reach me out i have an email um strategy they can reach me out or they can email me on constituency emails someone will be picked up from my team uh, and they will give it to me uh, we got an excellent campaign manager and we are very, very focused on social media campaign because social media is a quiet, uh, very efficiency way. The reason for it, because if you're knocking the doors, there is a specific time to knock the doors. You can knock every time. And for instance, some people are busy in their working schedule. We can't meet them personally every time they knock the door. So that's quite an old tradition way. But still, still, I am looking forward to meet up. If even any constituent wants to meet me or invite me for a coffee or something, I am down to it. I will make every 
effort to make and go there and meet up with them. Uh, you can see me on church. I go to church. I, I'm a very practicing Catholic Christian. And you can meet me in the church. Just come and say, me, say, say hello with me. And you can reach me on my phone number. My phone number is available 24 hours. Um, even though I get elected, this is the same situation. Um, I, am, I am a person with a public service. I used to be a former counsellor. That's how people reach me as well. If uh, I will do my best to respond to the email. As you know, I'm quite busy with the busy schedule with the campaign and those kind of things because I'm, I don't have one or two residents. I have 76,000 electorate. So I have to respond to every single one. And uh, by next week, I have hostings uh, lined up, which is 27th is White Rock Theatre in Hastings and 29th is St. Mary's Church in Rye. So because I have a two towns, which is Hastings and Rye, it is amalgamated into one constituency. So I have to meet so many people, but I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry uh, if anyone can't reach me, but I am there. You can reach me easily, but there are plenty of email address, my personal email address and my constituency email address. And Facebook, I've got Twitter, um, Twitter mean X, obviously it's names it change, uh, Instagram. So you can reach me anyway. I am a very friendly person. Uh, even, <laughs> even if you're rude to me, I, you will not get the, my rudeness back. I am a very friendly person. Mm. Or, or I, I'm a Christian person. I can't give it back as well. <laughs> Lucian, I hear you. Lucian, what specifically is the email, is the reform email that people can get you on? Hastings um, and... Hastings yeah, and Rye. Hastings and Rye at reformuk.com. That's the constituency email. Uh, there is another one. It's a Lucian Fernando at reformuk.com, which will straightly come to my inbox uh, rather than going to constituency. Um, my messengers are active, uh, which is my personal. Uh, per there is a personal profile, which is I hardly respond to that one manage in messenger. Uh, that's I use it for very very personal things. I don't. Uh, I even though I share political stuff, but I don't engage in that one uh, for the messenger. But I got a profile page in my name, Lucian Fernando. Um, if they text me, they will. Uh, if they send a message on that one, they will get an automated message, but I will respond to any message it, it, it comes through. And we got a well, brilliant news. We have a Facebook Reform UK Hastings and Rye, Reform UK Hastings and Rye Facebook page. But if you put a message, someone will pick up and reply you within a 24 hour or so, within a, a day or so. We will respond to soon as possible. That's how we are dealing with it. And um, Instagram, you can respond me, but even though it's a personal Instagram, I hardly look at it. But if I look at it, I will respond to that one. And obviously X, which is Twitter. Uh, I hardly get a message on that one because uh, Twitter sometimes so only allows so you the to. So the best thing is people reaching you by by email and going through your yeah email. Your... Oh, I'm I'm happy to share my mobile number as well. I got my mobile number, which is zero seven four. Five six six three one seven double eight. Uh, again, I will repeat it: zero okay, seven four five six six three one seven eight eight. If they want to reach me, I'm down for it. End of the day, I'm a public servant, servant for public, so <laughs> you can reach me. I will be stay like that even I get elected. I'm not gonna like uh, other people, other politicians. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Lucian. You referred to the fact that you were a councillor. So how do people feel? Um, and you may be tactful. How do people feel about the council? Do they feel they're getting uh, they're getting uh, their buck for the council? Do they feel that the council are using their their um, their money properly um, the value for money, etc. What are, what are the views on that? And also, if the council what makeup is the council? Was it fully Labour, Green? You've alluded to the fact the local MP, right, or the local MP, even though they're running until yeah. a couple of weeks ago, they were the MP, they're now running, and uh, it was Conservative. So how um, you win, how will you work with the council? Give, explain where, where, do I, where do I start? <laughs> it's a massive subject, Mark. Um, I got elected 2021. Um 
in in May 2021. It, it meant to be 2020, uh, but May, but because of a uh, COVID uh, impact, um, then it has been postponed to 2021. I got elected. Uh, used to be a conservative. I am a still conservative person, but I am not conservative party member. I'll put it that way. Um, because conservative party is drifting from the conservative values. They are not conservative anymore. I can openly admit that one day. There is no conservatism exists in the conservative party. Um, that's most of the conservative knows about it. Um, so I got elected. Then I was serving for local people, Silver Hill Ward. Uh, then I defected the party for reform. Some people say, oh, uh, even conservative uh, created a rumor uh, and uh, published it. I've been expelled. I want to clear about it. I wasn't being expelled. I've been resigned. I got a clear evidential proof. If a, if a person looking, watching these one, they can happily contact me, ask for proof. Where is my resignation? I will happily show it. Oh, in the meantime, I would like to say this one. If I even, I would like to put this question as well to forward to viewers. If I been expelled, how come the current sitting conservative MP wrote to me last October on 27th? I got the proof. If you want to see, email me. I will happily send you the proof of the letter. She was praising me. She was praising about the hard work. And she was respecting, as a, I'm a loyal conservative member, past. And she was invited me to back to the conservative party because she knows that mean reform gonna make it. Reform is doing some new direction. And she said she she praised me. She requested me back, here, even though I appreciate I appreciate a, a, a letter, but uh, I responded to that one. No, this is uh, this is uh, my view, and I am gonna stick with reform. So that's the question I'm putting for. If I been expelled, how come the current MP MP gonna gonna um, ask this one? Um, on putting that one onto that subject uh, onto the side, um, council is uh, the recent election, which is the last May happen. I wasn't being re-elected, um, and um, the Green Party took over. Uh, the council. Uh, the reason for it, it's a mismanagement of uh, a, a labor, a labor administration, because council was a labor administration. Um, because of the international matter, uh, Palestine matter, which is not even relevant to the council matter in the locally, or nothing to do with the national politics, um, about nine, I, I believe eight or nine labor councillors uh, started a new party called Hastings Independence uh, because they couldn't protest for uh, pro-Palestine matter and supporting the Gaza or, 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 or the Free Palestine movement um, because they had a very tight hands and they had a very strong um, things. Uh, they have started uh, from Labour Party headquarters. Uh, they, uh, the Labour Party then in, got involved in the local democracy and uh, they stopped them for protesting. So these people had no choice. Uh, then they had to start a new movement uh, for the Palestine, uh, pro-Palestine movement. Um, so the administration got broken. Then the Labour went into a minority, uh, even now also sitting as a minority uh, party and even conservative got worse as well because they lost me uh, I resign and they lost another councillor now he's sitting as an independent um, so they they went to attend councillors before the election after the election they even lost another two three councillors and they come to a six or five councillors now so conservative is very worse situation Labour in the middle now the green party control it other independent uh, councillors as well so the hasting council is a quite like a not major party controlling it it's a hung cabinet at the moment in the in the council and the problem in the hastings borough council the hastings borough council is controlled by there are minimum powers for hastings borough council such as collecting the revenues council tax uh, planning permission 
uh, such as licensing for uh, nightlife or the alcohol or the taxi licensing, licensing and um, bin control. Those things are still under the uh, under the authority of Borough Council. But um, the uh, apart from that one, such as uh, adult and health care, uh, then the road and infrastructure transport, uh, East, East Sussex uh, Health Trust, education, um, social care, these all are controlled by East Sussex County Council. So the East Sussex County Council, it's amalgamated by five council, which is the Hastings Borough Council, Wielden, Eastbourne, Brother, and Lewis. So the five councils together, it's a East Sussex County Council. So East Sussex County Council getting a 70 percentage of the chunk from the Hastings Borough Council's um, tax revenue. Um, so they, these revenue goes to them, only the 30 percent left over to the Hastings Borough Council. So the East Sussex County Council get funding from the national government as well. So what they do is, Rather than the prioritize, even though Hastings people, Hastings residents, paying their properly council tax, their priority not being met. They they never been met. If you visit to Hastings, you will find one of the worst road conditions in Hastings. That's how they've been treated by the East Sussex County Council. When I was a councillor, I tried to get fixed some of the road, and the counts, county council easily refuse it because of the reason even though people paying complete proper tax they refuse it they have a lack of budget rather than they putting the priority for our residents they they, they try to say oh well, we don't have budget because we have uh, some other priorities to met with it somewhere around Lewis or Eastbourne or rather so oh hang on a minute so what about my people my voters who put votes on me trusted me to fix the road and you're not prioritizing so like a grass cutting ver verges or you can refer uh, email uh, paragraph i wrote to email email uh, not email sorry mail daily mail they published it and those kind of things and they wasn't being uh, prioritized so they were some of the car when they are pulling out to the road the overgrown grass restricting their view so they can't turn around. So th there are lots of problems. So these uh, Hastings Borough Council is broken unless we become a unitary council, uh, which I been started campaigning about two years ago because I came to one point fed up with it. And I want the unitary Hastings Council because we have a uh, nearly 100,000 population somewhere. And lesser population such as Rutland and uh, Hartlepool, I believe, there are some other councils, are unitary. They control, they manage their own fin financial things and they get supports from, uh, 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 from the national government. And the housing crisis can be tackled as well with these one because we will get extra funding from national government. Um, so those kind of things, we, we, we need to address this one locally. And the Hastings Borough Council, unless it turns into a unitary council, um, uh, the things will not will get better, in my opinion. When you mean a unitarian ca unitary council, you mean all different flavors politically coming together for the good of of the the council that they are then being elected to. Is that what you mean? Uh, the unitary council mean Mark. Uh, there is a more power. Um, more powers mean the local government will get more power, such as right. the county council. Whatever they're doing it, it will be transferred to the Hastings Borough Council. So the unitary council. So we can um, manage our finances. We can say right, okay, uh, this week we're gonna fix uh, Bohemia Road. Uh, then we can transfer according to our needs, our priority. Um, or it, it, whatever priority needed by our residents, whoever put, regardless of party politics, whoever um, uh, sitting in the chamber as a as a representative of each ward or each division, they have to think right. Okay, we end of the day, you are a public servant and you are your service for public, right? You can have a, any banner, reform, Labour, Conservative doesn't matter end of the day you working for people 
So whatever this is for the people, you need to be there and you need to be sorted out the problems. Watch out. It, there are lots of things to be sorted out. The pe people requesting for it. I don't think because these, these because of their restriction, they couldn't do it, anything. Right. Lucian, we have covered... We've covered quite a lot of ground. You, you've uh, we've talked about the housing housing problems. You've talked about the sewage issues, the pressure uh, to actually get a GP appointment, laying out hmm. uh, the the ways that uh, reform would want to tackle that. You've talked about the reform uh, contract, etc., school provision, trades, etc. Um, is there anything else that you that uh, your constituents have confirmed? Well, I'll ask. What about what about crime in your area? Do they feel that there are enough uh, policemen and women to cover the constituency? And what crimes are are the police not dealing with, etc.? Um, there are the police is <laughs> commonly I would say police has become a uh, become a very soft and it's a two-tier policing at the moment, and it's a vogue policing, which is Reform UK, very, very clear about it. We will not do a vogue policing. Can you believe it? It's uh, they, one of the force in uh, England. They say Metropolitan Police Service. It's not service. It's a force. <laughs> they have to think about it. It's not. You're not doing a service for people. At the end of the day, you are arresting a person who are, who are offender so they should be changed that name into a metropolitan police force and i used to i used to be a, i used to work as a in police metropolitan police uh, as a voluntary capacity and i think police becoming a very soft and uh, here in the hastings and Rye, i would say um bike theft is very increased and people uh, the police is not doing anything even though they're doing it uh, our law is very soft for under 18s. Um, so this is a very, very, uh, how can I say, it is a very opportunity for re-offending, I would say, for youngsters, uh, because they don't have nothing uh, and uh, they, they're thinking in a, a different way because they are thinking of easy money, of these uh, social media influencers. The influencers, they are very, some of the things are very expensive and they're looking for buying stuffs. So they, they don't have a, 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 the, the culture. Its culture is getting away and away. So they are distracted. There is no opportunities available. So they're distracted and they're doing these kind of things. So a drug county line is happening as well. Um, which is um, the it, it, county line is quite a hard subject because um, you have, it, 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 for example, the county line, if you want to destroy the county line, you have to find the root of it. And until you find the root of it, it's really hard to tackle because the root person, whoever started it and whoever master of it, if you destroy the first bit, whoever transporter, but he's going to change his number and he's going to disappear and he's going to, start and redoing it in a different identity so our county line is very hard uh, so the local police have to work with the other police services as well police forces as well sorry not services police forces as well um so they, they, they there are there are some kind of a restriction police also have to uh, face the difficulty because of the soft law because even though if they're using a force, they will say uh, the, uh, some of the media going to twist, oh, you are using excessive force. So they are in the very pressurized situation as well. We can't always blame the police force as well because they are working under huge pressure, uh, um, such as, for example, let's think about an American situation. Uh, the police officer... Uh, I have to shut down someone and uh, he have to go through excessive uh, investigation because uh, there are there are some even though you are criminal some people say they, they will pick on your color and your ethnicity or oh, because of that color these police officers uh, uh, handled it very excessive force uh, but the people don't look at it what is the crime happen and the officer because that officer officers are very scared as well because of the they, they don't have a freedom and they have been pressured by the hierarchy i'm not blaming all the officers um so uh, they also have to go through some of the protocol so we are, have a very soft police force in here um and if you go to other countries even they have a weapons to handle with it even if you speak about human rights 
mm, they don't care because they if you are breaking a if you are breaking a law there is no human rights to play with it because the if you're breaking you are a criminal if you are breaking a law that means you should be everyone who are british citizen has been have to everyone in this land have to respect our law uh, 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 have, a, uh, have a dignity for respect of the law um, people make mistakes um, people make mistakes some some people will be repent and uh, they will they will look for new opportunities some people don't um, they will reoffend it because they don't have other opportunities so they will be pushed into that uh, that line so they will be doing it so the police as uh, we, we have an increase um shoplifting we have a uh, coming to the subject we have a shoplifting we have a bike theft which is not being tackling properly uh sometime in the winters there is a ex uh, excessive of um farming uh stealing farming uh what do you call some farming missionaries and those kind of things in the rural area um those kind of things are happening and uh Police is sometimes police is there to prevent the crime and the investing crime uh, also. So at the moment, police is not preventing the crime, even though you call for nine nine nine. Let's say if someone is sitting on the your door door uh, on your doorway and uh, you're calling to nine nine nine, this person is sitting. So they will ask you, oh right, okay, is that person looking like homeless? Uh, if I say, if someone saying, yeah, it's looking like homeless. Oh, it's there is no category A. It's not an emergency call. Can you call to the one o one? So when you call to the non-emergency number, the police will take ages to attend because it's not an immediate danger. So. What about that person restricting it, your doorway? And what about this? Guy? So those kind of things, it's happening. It's turned the police in, police force into a very soft situation. We need to reform the force and we need to recruit more officers. Reform is very clear. We will recruit more officers. By the five years time, we will recruit 40,000 new officers to, on the um, road. In my personal belief, I think uh, the police force shouldn't be something like uh, Sussex Force, Kent Force, BTP, British Transport Force, Metropolitan Police Force, Manchester Force, Greater Manchester, th those kind of are rubbish in my belief. It should be amalgamated into one police force as a great British police force. Um, in that one, we can tackle the uh, crime properly and we can, um, what do you call, it, prevent the crime and investigate the crime. The, uh, it will be like a national police force um there are there are so many examples i can start talk about the police force uh, there are other 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 things as well such as railway if you something happening in the railway you have to, if you call to 999 they have they will say you oh can you contact the btp um so the local police force will be not attend because they are they are attend because they are that's not their jurisdiction it's a british transport police okay. so these should be tackled and it should be come under the one umbrella of the great british police force lucian i mean that subject in regard to the police and having a national police force is a as an hour's conversation yes um mm -hmm. because one advantage we always say by having different police forces is then they is to try and help them be accountable to each other but of course it's what's going up further up the scale with a civil service mindset Lucian, we're we're coming up to time now and i just want to thank you very much okay. for joining me but i do please give out where uh people can find you again your your email your mobile phone etc and um and then we'll go from there thank you no problem, Mark. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. God bless. All right. Um, thank you, Lucien. Sorry, I'll just say, Lucien, could you give out your email again so that people can get hold of you? I do yeah. apologize. Yeah, no problem. Lucien.fernando at reformuk.com. That will straight come to me. And the other one is constituency email, which is Hastings and Rye, which is Hastings, A-N-D, which is Alpha November Delta and Rai, R-Y-E, which is Romeo Yankee Echo, at reformuk.com. And again, remind us about the haste. You've got hustings, I think, on the 27th. What are the, what, what's the other date that is coming up? 27th is Hastings one, which is in the White Rock Theatre Studio. And 29th is St. Mary's Church in Rai. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. Lucien, thank you again, sir. Thank you very no much problem. for your time and uh, and joining me to 
joining me today. People, you know how to get hold of your uh, prospective parliamentary candidate in Hastings and Rye, Lucian Fernando, and uh, reach out to him if you are if you wish to help. Then step forward, and I'm sure he will be very very appreciative of that help. I'm just going to play us out, Lucian. Stay with me on the other side, and we'll say goodbye. Thank no you, problem. everyone, Thank for you. joining me. If you uh, are not following the channel, then click on the bell and become a follower and make any comments is always much appreciated okay take care lucian thank you sir thank you